Welcome back to another video from me, Stephen Hamilton, and today I am with the boys from the MRCB company, Matt Royley and Carl Baldwin. This is how you do a lease option agreement correctly. And enough. No banter. I don't think anybody can beat me in anything. <laughs> and I wasn't even out first year. There's a lot of enthusiasm. <laughs> and enough. Here we are, the entrance to this magnificent building is absolutely beautiful. As I walk in, I can see the scope of works that needs to be carried out in this property. It's a massive renovation, huge project for the boys. On the left hand side of me to the right of you is the first apartment on the ground floor slash first floor, whatever you want to call it. We're going to go up basement, this floor, second, third, fourth, but come and take a look at this apartment first. Here we are, first apartment. This is the lounge slash kitchen room. Amazing, really high ceilings. There's a chimney breast that I was using knockouts, but they're not going to do that. To the right of me is a bathroom. Now the bathroom here has just got a shower, a toilet, and the basin in there. And behind me is the first bedroom on this one. It's the only bedroom because this floor and the three above me are one bedrooms and the basement is a two bedroom. Now you've seen the ground floor slash first floor apartment. I'm going to go upstairs to the second floor. We'll show you that one. And then we're going to speak to Matt, who is one of the owners, and ask him some questions. So come with me. So here we are on the second floor, which is a one bedroom apartment. To the left of me is the bedroom. Great space, windows are great. One thing I haven't said, to grade two listed building. Lots of rules, lots of regulations. The boys will explain everything throughout this video. I have a lot to ask them. Lease option, grade two listed, cost of conversion. So many questions, but we'll go through that. Now, bathroom's behind me, straight in the middle. Front door is here. And then to the right of me is the kitchen lounge or kitchen living room. I'm not sure how they're wording it, but we'll find out now. So come inside, let's have a chat with Matt. So here we are. Matt Riley, one of the owners of the property. Thank you for having us. No problem, thanks, Kelly. I really appreciate it. Unbelievable property. Thank you. Fantastic. Five floors. Yeah. Five flats. Yeah. Two bedroom on the basement. Yeah. And then all the rest of one bedrooms. Yeah. All the rest of one bedrooms. Grade two listed. Yeah. Do you want to tell the people at home some of the problems that you've had with a grade two listed building? Uh, we had to wait seven months just for the application to go through for them to say what we could do. Um, we've had to redo all the slash windows, um, get them repaired, otherwise it's too expensive. All the coving and skirting that's already here, we've had to keep and repair it, which is going to cost a fortune. Anything that's already down, we can just leave. Um, the biggest thing is the line plaster. Yep. Um, literally, it's four different coats, I think. There's scratch coats, fine coats, top coats. And you have to wait seven days in between every coat to dry. Um, the bags of plaster, plaster this ceiling with 17 bags. And if it's multi skin, it'd be two bags. So. And a bag of lime plaster is around £30 a bag? It depends which it is, it's between £7 and £30, yeah. So, yep. And there's all different ones for every stage. Okay. So it's killing us, that is. But yeah, other than that, there's. Well, we can't touch anything. We can't change any layouts. We can't. Everything that's in here like it is, we have to keep. We yep. can't do anything, so. And that's part of having a grade two listed building, yeah. isn't it? And have the council sent someone round to you to no, have a look? No, COVID, they said. But they just give us a massive list of what they can do. We had yeah. a Zoom call with them. Because every time we emailed them, there's like three weeks to reply. So we said, it's getting a bit like of a joke now. So they said, we'll get on a Zoom meeting, go through everything. Did all that. They sent us an application saying, we can do all this stuff. And then we just said, yeah, we'll go from there. And we're not going to get them back around or anything yet. So yeah, just got to do what they said. Okay, so grade two listed building can be problematic. But if you know what you're doing and you've got the right information to hand, it's not as difficult as yeah, it seems. Yeah. Now you've gone through the first phases and you understand the do's and the don'ts, it's easy for you to go into another grade yeah, two listed. Definitely, yeah, definitely do another one. It's just a lot more expensive, isn't it? Yeah, a lot more. It's not like a normal renovation on a normal building like this. Grade two listed buildings can be very hard work. We're going to have a look around yeah. and then we're going to talk to your business partner yeah. and see how you actually acquired the property. So come with me upstairs and let's have a chat with Carl. Now we're coming up to 
to the third floor, which again is a one bedroom. And we go in, same again. To the left of me is the bedroom, views great. Coming back into the hallway, we have the bathroom behind us. And then to the right of me, we have the kitchen slash lounge area. Come inside, Carl's in here, and we'll get more information on how they acquired this property. Here we are with one of the owners of the property, well, the other owner of the property, Carl. Thank you, Carl, for joining us. Thank you for coming. Love the house. Lovely. Told Matt, amazing house. I did try to buy it off Matt. I don't know if he told you. I was like, I'll write you a check today. I did hear that, yeah. But I love this property. Something I say all the time is your network is your net worth. And the position that I am in now is because of some of the rooms I put myself in previously, getting out there, networking, letting every single person know what I did for a living. So you got a phone call from a friend, didn't you? Yeah. About a guy who owns a certain amount of properties in the area? A uh, hundred, actually. A hundred yeah. properties, and he needed some work doing, potentially. So we sat down with him and talked about building work. Yep. It actually turned out he didn't need any building work at that time. Okay. But he had a property that was empty, and he was doing nothing with it, and yep. was really interested in buying it. And that, this, that's and this one? this is that property, yeah. So wow. we came here the next day, as soon as he walked through that door, before we even looked, I looked at Matt and I said, this is the one. Okay. Because um, he already like, kind of talked about priced the night before but yep. obviously I hadn't seen it yet. So. And Matt told me when I came in, when you guys took this on, you really had no idea the scopes of work that it was going to take to complete it. No. But you wasn't bothered, was you? No, we just said yeah and then we was going to worry about it later. Yeah, so you saw Richard Branson make a comment That's it, yeah. and it was say yes now yeah. and work it out afterwards. That's exactly what we've done, yeah. Wow. So. Can you imagine that? And they've come here, they've said yes, they've done a deal, they've shook hands. What was the purchase price? 355. 355,000 pound on a handshake. But the best part about this deal, now we all watch YouTube, we all know about lease option agreements and what a lot of you who watch these videos from people like me and other educators in the market is lease option agreement isn't as simple as it's made out to be. It's simple when you do it like these guys did it. So explain how a real lease option agreement works. So how this works, we basically agreed the price to purchase at 355 uh, over a two year period. Um, so we have to basically, we lease it for two years and we complete within two years for 355. I paid a landlord a mortgage of 12.50 per calendar month, every month. That then gives me uh, the scope to come in here basically and do the refurb. I would yeah. do that then for the next two years. I would try and cut it short if I can. Yep. I'm hoping to get it complete within a year. So then as soon as I've finished, I will then buy this building at 355, even though it will be worth a lot more a than lot that. More, but we will go into that in a second about what each individual flat will be worth. So there you have it. £355,000 purchase price. They shook the landlord's hand. The paying his mortgage of £1,250 for two years, and then within that two years, they will complete on the purchase of the property. So my next question, which a lot of people at home are gonna to want to know, this contract that you drawed up between yeah. you and the landlord, what did it cost you? £1,500. £1,500 to draw it up. It was done by solicitors. Done by solicitor, yeah. And did he have his he representation? Yeah, it's all been so the contract was watertight. Yeah, it's all watertight. It yeah. wasn't just a handshake, and then in two years' time, you can come back and say, actually, no, I don't want to sell it you now. Thank you very much for no, what no, you've done. No, it's all watertight, yeah, we've got it exactly there as well. Again, another thing that doesn't get explained with lease option agreements is that the contract is so important. It's one of the most important parts of anything because yeah. you guys are going to spend upwards of £100,000 out yes. of your own money, yeah. plus. Yeah. Plus, you're also paying £30,000 potentially in, in mortgage payments yeah. for him. So if he did come and knock the door in two years time when you're completing and said to you, you know what, I've changed my mind now. If you never had a contract, you, you're well, yeah. well, you shit out of luck, we'd aren't you? Yeah, yeah, we'd know the, yeah, we'd be done out. Really. Yeah, a little tip there, guys. Put yourself in the right place at the right time. Let people know exactly what you do for a living and you could end up with something like this. Yeah. So let's go downstairs into the basement so I can show you that and then we'll catch up with Matt on the top floor and he can run through who his build team are, what the expected costs are, and then at the end of the video, we'll get to the most important part, what they're going to make or what the build is going to be worth. <laughs> <laughs> We're 
in the back garden of the property and down there is a two bedroom basement flat. It's the biggest one that they've got. It's the one that's going to cost the most money. The entrance to the basement is out the front, but it's blocked up at the moment because they don't want anybody stealing anything when they're not on site. Two bedrooms, kitchen lounge is in one. It has a separate bathroom. It's very similar to the other layouts. I am so impressed with this property and the way they've done it with a lease option agreement done correctly is absolutely amazing. They paid the solicitors to make sure the contracts were right. They didn't really do the due diligence on the scope of works that they was taking on. But like me, sometimes you have to take a risk. Sometimes it's nice just to take a leap of faith. I'm not saying go out, buy a house, and then run with it and you're going to make some money because if I gave that kind of advice out, I wouldn't be very good at what I did. But I do take a lot of things on gut and how I feel. These guys took a chance and hopefully it pays off for them. The numbers, we're gonna go upstairs now, have a chat with them, and I'm impressed, I'm very impressed. Now we are on the top floor, which is the fourth floor, and this one is a little bit different to the previous ones below. It's still a one bedroom, but it's laid out a little bit different. Behind the camera is the kitchen slash lounge. It has a sloping roof, giving it a bit of a more enclosed feel, and it's a little bit smaller, but it's still a great space. Coming through to here, we have the bathroom behind us, similar to the other ones, just there. And in here is the one bedroom. We're gonna go in here, speak to Matt, and see how he's managing this project. So here we are, back with Matt again, and we're in the top floor apartment. Great space still. Yeah. Matt and Carl are managing the project on their own. Now, I always say, pay a contractor, mm -hmm. take the responsibility off you, but, it's money, it's isn't it? Yeah, it's can... money on this one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Because it's such a big outlay. Yeah. Um, there's no finance involved, is there? You're doing it all yourselves. Yeah. Explain to me who you have on your team because you're project managing this yourself. Yeah. So tell me who your team are yeah. and you've got them on a daily rate. Yeah, yeah. So basically, it's all my boys that usually work for me. Um, I've got three carpenters. Uh, the electrician, he's got his own company. I'm buying all the kit for it for cost price. Uh, so he's helping me out there. I've got two plasterers who... They work for me full time as well, and they're on a really good day rate. Got a painter who works for me full time. He's been refurbing all the windows. Um, I think that's it at the moment. So that's your team at the yeah, minute. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So you might seven or eight, seven or eight boys. How are you find? How are you finding managing the project yourselves? Because obviously you've got other things that you do, yeah, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Because we're well, basically, we was running jobs at the same time. We had I think it's three jobs on the go at the same time as this, um, and it was just manic trying to get everyone from place to place. Um, so in December. We just cancelled everything, didn't take any more jobs on. We got all our six projects that we was doing uh, before that. Everything was finished because there was snags and stuff. Um, that all got finished and then we decided to focus on this. That's why all the plastering is coming along now, all the studs have been built. Because um, we did have someone in here who did the studs but they fucked up. It, it was, he was a young guy but um, yeah, we just left him to it and he wasn't really turning up. So. We wasted all the studs, all the money on the studs, all the money on the labour, two months worth of mortgages. So it cost us about four or five grand. Before, take, you, before got, you even get started, really? Before we even got started, yeah. Wow. So we had to take it all down again, get someone in, which has quadrupled the price, our other boys. We didn't really want to use them at the start because of the money, but they are really good, so we thought we're just going to have to do it. But now, that's been the last two, three weeks, they've all been built, everything's been done. Wow. One of my sayings is pay cheap, pay twice. Yeah, literally, yeah. If you guys out there are going to go into doing your own renovations, Take note, you'll learn things. Make sure you check who's doing the work for you. Make sure you see previous work. If you wanna get recommendations, get recommendations. I always advise it. But just pay attention, be on the ball, and make sure you keep an eye out for things that you can see that are going wrong and put a stop to it before it goes too far and costs you too much money. Hats off to you, and I can clearly see the potential. And I am gonna talk about the numbers to you, yeah. but we'll do that downstairs. Yeah. So, 
three hundred and fifty-five thousand was yeah. the purchase price. Yeah. And you've got obviously stamp, legals, yeah. contracts, and stuff like that. What is your estimated renovation costs? Uh, so we're looking at one forty, one fifty. I reckon right? we're going to go about forty k over the budget. Okay. Last things we didn't see coming. Obviously, we didn't know what was going to happen, but yeah. So we haven't budgeted for it, but yeah, it's going to be about one forty. Okay. So if we just round it off to one fifty yeah. with a contingency, yeah, yeah. and three fifty-five, let's say fifteen, twenty grand for other bits and pieces with yeah. stamp duty and yeah, solicitors, yeah. you're looking at around five twenty. Yeah. Maybe oh, you guys yeah. are hoping to get in for five hundred, aren't you? Five, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All in, yeah. Okay, so 500, let's just say, for argument's sake, what is the end value? We've got it valued by um, one of the best estate agents in the UK, top five. What's the name of them? Uh, Murdoch and Wesley. They valued it at 650. We thought 600. Yeah. They said the current market, easily 120 per one bed flat, yeah. and then 180 for the bottom. And because of the area, when he came back, he said, like, because of where it is. 650 all day. He valued them individually. Yeah. The total was 650. So. Yeah. Okay, but your plans. Yeah. Are to refinance. Remortgage it. Take all our money back. Yeah. And we should be left split even then. Okay. Yeah. And, and then, then the whole building's energy. free. Yeah. yeah. And you'll rent every apartment out. Yeah. When do you reckon this will be completed? I would yeah. say if you was to come back end of April, we would be done. Okay, so you heard it here first, yeah. end of yeah, April. What's the one piece of advice that you can give to somebody who's looking to get started in the property world? Don't get a grade two. Don't <laughs> get a grade two, there you go. Uh, and you? Get educated. Get, edu get educated, wow, yeah. there you go. Well, that I, wasn't a plug. Basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, literally. I would just say, like, literally, if you've got money, like, that's what we've done. Yep. We, we got educated, we spent quite a bit of money on education. Yep. Um, well, we, we got, we got we friends asking, oh, I've got 30 grand, what should I do? We spent 30 grand on education. So you yeah. told me, yeah, I know all about this. How we, how we know all our stuff, it's literally education. They said, oh, I'll put a deposit on the house, yeah. I get 200 pound a month profit, yeah. and they don't know what to do. They don't know how to refinance or anything. So that yeah. education is literally And I was actually going to do that a few years ago. I was going to go and buy a property, yeah. 30K down, but I didn't know what I was doing. So yeah. I just left the 30K in. So I spent 30K on courses, and then I've worked, now I've been taught how to use that 30K multiple times. Yeah. So Education is key. Yeah, it's it's so important. So don't buy a grade two listed building, Education is key. Something else you can take from this video is networking. Yeah. Because That's you it. guys That's wouldn't have so, this yeah. if you hadn't put yourselves out there yeah, and yeah. someone had made a phone call to the right person. As soon as you have social media, if nobody knows what you're doing, how are you supposed yeah. to get people to contact you? Yeah, yeah. So I preach this, branding is key. Brand everything and let people know what you are doing 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Had a great day. Thank you very much for, for inviting, for inviting us down. I appreciate it, thank you. Yeah, thank you. There you have it. End of the video, the boys were amazing, the project is unreal, and it just goes to show that if you put yourself out there, you never know what opportunities are gonna come knocking. So on that note, please smash that like button. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please, please, please subscribe to the channel. We're nearly at 3,000 followers. We should be when this video hits, and I will see you next week with another video.